warning symbol or grading greater than 90% of CPU utilization for that exchange server. And so forth and so on. It can be applied to any other mission critical appliances. Okay. So X out of Y poles, X consecutive poles, and single pole. Okay. That would give you a warning sign or a critical. So let's change that back to defaults. Ninety percent, okay, and single pole. So those are the defaults, or I could simply uncheck them and then have the node utilize the global thresholds. What else? This particular section here, where it says status rollup mode, so it has best, mixed, and worst status. What this means is that. Um, status rollup mode will present you um, the overall status of the node and its uh, child objects. There we go. Status rollup mode in the Orion platform. So for show best status, you see this diagram here where it says um, up, warning, and then down. Even though you have those three elements currently in those states, you will still get an up status for this particular group because you are mentioning show best status. That can be said through here. Show best status. Okay. What about... Um, Mixed status or a worse status first, worse status, okay? If it was worse status, then it will show you the worst possible state that the group would be in. So one object is currently up, one object is currently down, uh, warning, and one object is currently down. It will show you a down status, okay? And that can be said here, worst, okay? Last but not the least, mixed okay so if it's mixed you see the diagram here critical if it is currently showing um down and um critical okay same with critical as well and then mixed availability now if you do that individually of course okay it, it will just apply individually for this particular device but then again, if you do that here, settings, manage node, and then there you go, it changed. That one changed for some reason. Okay, but let's check that later on. So if you do that here and then click on edit properties, This is where you could change the status rollup mode for that particular group. Okay. Instead of uh, mixed status, it doesn't allow me. There we go. Now it allows me to, sh uh, to show you whether it is best, mixed, or worst status. Okay. Now, uh, Let me see now. What else can be discussed with regards to enhanced vol uh, node, uh, what do you call this, the nodes and dependencies? Uh, okay. Okay, just to um, wrap up uh, the, the discussion, okay, we'll continue on tomorrow. But um, let me just show you this uh, volume status at this point. Uh, this is where you could actually change that on individual volumes or group of volumes that you're trying to monitor to override the general thresholds and also for the polling. See? So 
remember the polling, the polling statistics for SNMP is 15 minutes, and you could change that. 120 seconds is for ICMP, or up and down status, okay? We'll talk about the uh, calculate uh, ex exhaustion using average daily values and calculate exhaustion using peak daily values tomorrow. Um, but right now, let me change this back to the defaults, 90 and 80%. Okay. Okay. So that is one um, feature of the enhanced status for node and volume, wherein you could change um, uh, what do you call this? The the status that you see, whether you don't want to stat, uh, the, whether you won't, don't want to see warning or critical, and adjust that appropriately to what you would like to have it with. Okay, based on the status, we will be uh, discussing about child status participation and uh, uh, what do you call this? Child status participation and dependencies okay tomorrow so you have any questions so far before we end the session because um right now we don't have any lab lab exercises that's why it um we are only up to four o'clock for today questions or clarifications Anyone? Can you still hear me? <laughs> Guys? Yeah, you're still there? <laughs> Agent record <laughs> reboot? Uh, not really. You don't. Um, mm -hmm. You don't really not need necessary. to reboot the uh, yeah the server. Although you can if you want, you know, but it doesn't require any reboot. Yeah, like what Eric said, we we're only until up to this point because um, we don't have any labs for the day. We'll definitely continue mm -hmm. with other topics tomorrow, like with accounts. Um, I believe we'll uh, also alerts, cover reports. that tomorrow. Alerts, reports. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's it, right? Alerts, reports, accounts, and maps. Maps. Well, with maps, maps we can uh, we can cover that on the on the SAM training itself. Mm -hmm. Because of the uh, yeah. application dependencies. Yeah, it's uh, mm -hmm. if we cover maps uh, during the two day Orion, it'll be redundant when we get to SAM. You know, so mm -hmm. we'll just cover that during the SAM training. So we'll just have tomorrow uh, the continuation of this, and then we can proceed with accounts. And then proceed mm -hmm. with alerts and reports. That's it. Yep. Sorry yeah. if I took your time. <laughs> it was only meant up to uh, up to four o'clock uh, Singapore time. Yeah. So... Oh, we'll be only up to... on. Mm -hmm. So at least you'll uh, will get you'll have your two hours back, guys. So you can use that for your lunch or whatever, you know, to have uh -huh. some rest. So we'll then continue tomorrow. But some so, weird customer. Okay. What's this? Can it be used for reporting on all parameters of mail server? Is that a Linux server? Pop up reboot. Yeah, so, well, if you install something, best practice is to reboot it, right? But it doesn't really require to do It's not really required to do that. But in some cases, if you were prompted to do it, then by all means, go ahead and do it, right? But before you reboot, you, you want to make sure that it's not going to affect the production, right? Mm -hmm. You're not going to impact your production environment. Um, just, to, um, just to add it to that, um, it depends on the policy that you employ with your company, especially when installing software. There are cases that um, computer policies require a reboot after installation. Um, it depends again, it depends on uh, yeah. um, what, what policy you employ with your company. Agents don't normally require a reboot, 
But if you are prompted to do it, then by all means do it, right? So like what Eric said, with regards to policies and also with regards to some other software uh, dependencies, to ensure that it will work properly, a reboot would be advisable. Yeah. And as an but, example, if uh, I... Um, yeah, go, go ahead, sir. No, no. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, as an example, if um, you know, I'm trying to push a software through SCCM, and uh, that software uh, will mention if it will require a reboot based on company policy, then automatically the system will prompt you that it is rebooting. But for the Orion um, agent, if you're going to deploy that on the machine, and if you are allowed, actually in the first place, if you will be allowed by your uh, company that you could uh, install a piece of software, then it depends on what type of uh, group policy object employed against that machine. Okay, if it requires a reboot after each installation of a software. Right. So are there any more questions guys that you might have? If none, then again, thank you very much guys for your time today. Yep. Uh, your question? Uh, one more so we're question. Gonna, we're gonna give you back your two hours um, for for your break and for for you guys to relax. I know it's been it's been a long time that we were covering these things for the, for you today. Uh, it's too much information. I would understand. So we would be giving you this two hours back to you for your for your own. Okay, but tomorrow we we'll, we're gonna begin again, same time. Haven't really changed the schedule. We'll continue with other topics. So DVS question, can agent be used for reporting of all parameters of mail server installed on a Linux server? You can do that. You can uh, use agents when you want to monitor a mail server, say uh, Postfix or Dovecot on a Linux server uh, DV. We're going to get to that discussion when we get to Sam. I'm going to show you those built-in templates for Postfix, for Dovecot, for other mail servers. Thunderbird. <laughs> Thunderbird. I, I'm not sure if there is a, a built-in template for that, template, but you can, yeah. <laughs> you can search Thwap for it, or you can just build your own custom template, right? But yeah, to, to, no. normally, uh, really, Divi, the, the answer to your question is, if you want to monitor a Linux server, you can only either use SNMP or Agent. Yeah, can't use WMI on that. Obviously, WMI is exclusive for Windows. <laughs> if it's a Zimbra mail server, I'll have to double check. It's not on top of my head. We can double check the application templates built into SAM for that. If not, then we can look on Thwack. We're gonna get mm -hmm. there when we get when we discuss SAM. Okay, remind me of your question again. We're gonna return to that. Zimbra, Zimbra that Zimbra template on yeah. on Sam, or if it's not, it may be on Thwack. Or if it's not on Thwack, then you build your own template, right? You build your mm -hmm. own application monitor. We're gonna cover those things on the fourth day of training. Yep. Yeah, exciting. On Friday. Yeah. <laughs> really, really interesting, right? So yeah, we'll definitely get there. So yeah, uh, thank you guys for your time. Okay, so we're gonna talk to you again tomorrow. All right. Take care. Yep. Thank you. And have a good day. Yeah, thanks, guys.